All right, World War Three update. Now, if my voice sounds a little bit different, it's because I had to buy a new, go out and buy a brand new microphone. I hope it's not too different, because I know some people notice differences. Uh, I remember saying in one of my Q and A's, because somebody commented, "What you don't do World War Three updates anymore?" And I had said, "Well, you know, when you don't hear a World War Three update from me, it's good news. No news is good news because it means that there's not much going on in the world and things are calming down." Well, today that is not the case. In fact, this is probably going to be. Uh, one of my more important uh, World War III updates because of the dominoes that are in play right here. It We are seeing a checkmate that is about to just unfold. Uh, it really, really will be uh, something that will have impact in many parts of the world all at once. And what I'm talking about, and a lot of people are talking about this already, is John Kerry. We're not talking conspiracy theorists. We're not talking uh, we think and we believe. We're talking what John Kerry said. And what he said was that uh, if the nuclear deal with Iran is not signed, the U.S. dollar could lose world reserve currency status. Let that sink in. It means the Cold War is about to turn hot if that's the case. And at the same time, okay, there's so many things going on here that it's really hard to kind of nail it all in one. Uh, so hopefully I won't forget too much, but we're going to go to China. Uh, about two days ago, there was a massive, massive explosion in China, apparently due to uh, the sewer system, and blew up and killed a bunch of people. Not that many, considering the size of the explosions, but these were really large explosions. Now, maybe this has nothing to do with nothing, sometimes coincidence, maybe not, who knows. But the very day after, which is uh, basically yesterday or today from the making of this video, uh, the Chinese basically devout, yeah? Sorry about that interruption, but the Chinese basically devalued their currency for the second time in about 20 years where they've done this. Uh, but they've also uh, lowered it, uh, or the, lowest they, the lowest they've had it since I think 20 years. So you'll have to look into, uh, I'm not sure if I quite understood how they've done it. But the idea is how, do they, how did they lower their currency? What I'm hearing is what they did is dumped, you guessed it, U.S. Treasury bonds on the market. And who's buying these bonds? You guessed it, the Federal Reserve. So what does that have to do with everything? Well, it has everything to do with everything. In other words, there is no economic recovery in the United States. Things are falling apart big time. It's getting insolvent. Now, here's the thing with what John Kerry said, okay, uh, you know, that uh, if the Iran deal is not signed, that it would the United States would lose world reserve, reserve currency status. But what you have to keep in mind is how is how's that again? How does that happen if Iran doesn't sign a deal? It's Iran. It's the middle of nowhere, right? It has nothing to do with nothing, right? Well, not so fast, because there is a lot to do with everything. And if you're from the Ukraine, you're going to want to hear the next little bit that I'm going to talk about. And it's something that I said right from day one in the Ukraine. The Ukraine will be thrown under the bus. It will, it will be. You, here we call it Ukraine. Putin calls it my Ukraine, and it will be a part of Russia at the end of this deal. It, it, almost a guarantee. If the if the dominoes fall, where they're going to fall? The Ukraine is is toast. And we're going to get to the Ukraine in a minute. But right now, I've always said there's three phases to war. It's not my saying this. It's just kind of how it plays out in history. You have a currency war, which we, we're seeing now. This China devaluing its dollar is... There's a couple of plays here. Number one, it allows them to be more competitive on the market because the IMF is not allowing them to have a second reserve currency. They're, they're not allowing them into the club. So they're devaluing their dollars so people move to that. This also, by get, sending the treasuries back, increases the U.S. treasuries. Uh, you know, that, that, that's what I've said. That was the trump card China has, is that they could dump $4 trillion worth of treasuries on the market. They might not do it all at once. But what will happen is you're gradually going to know things in the United States getting extremely expensive. In other words, hyperinflation is coming back to the United States. The Americans only have a death and debt-based economy. They don't manufacture hardly anything anymore. They can only live on imports, exports. Unfortunately, that's the way NAFTA works. It screws everybody over in the end. But the Chinese, they might be playing a really smart game here. It's the long con. Well, here's what they're doing. They're going to drive their dollar, racing their dollar to the bottom. This will drive, and by sending the U.S. Treasuries back, it will drive the U.S. dollar up. Nobody will be able to buy anything from the Americans. And up here in Canada, we do 80% trade with the Americans. Look, a little uh, refinery took a hit in Chicago. Our fuel prices go up in Alberta. Alberta. <laughs> you see, uh, Trudeau years ago when we signed into APA, uh, APA, uh, OPEC, sorry, uh, we, we agreed not to build any more refineries here. I bet you, you know, when people are paying 8 bucks a liter, they're going to wish we had the refineries here. 
again, a sustainable economy, not a global-based economy. It's the mountain climber effect. One falls, we all fall. And right now, what the Chinese are doing is they're cutting the rope. They're, link, they're, they're putting their, their link into the mountain. They're cutting the rope. They're letting everybody else fall. But people will go to that currency. It is now going to be competitive. It is a currency war. Now, there's, this also coincides with the trade war. Japan and China already have a trade war and currency war currently going. So trade war, currency war, shooting war. Or uh, currency war, trade war, shooting war. Okay. Now, we have the trade war already with Russia. It's called sanctions. We have it on Iran. Now, the thing is, is if this deal isn't signed with Iran, how does it lead to a U.S. currency, you know, default or whatever? Well, it's simple. The EU, if the U.S. does not sign this deal, the EU may drop sanctions against Russia. Let that sink in. If the EU doesn't, if they, if the U.S. doesn't sign this deal with Iran, okay, which is 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 the deal Israel needs anyway to go to war with Iran, because all they have to do is say, oh, Iran violated this one little sanction or this one little section, and they they get to blow the snot balls out of Iran all they like with the U.S. military. Um, that that's 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 the deal. It looks like a great deal for Iran, but it's not. Uh, again, I don't know why they would have signed it in the first place because it has that stipulation in there. If they pursue weapons of mass destruction, and that can mean anything, okay, the, the U.S. can go to war with them. So you see how this can turn hot very quickly, but it gets worse than that because if the EU if they don't sign it, the EU will drop all the sanctions with Russia. Meaning, uh, Putin is playing a tr uh, maybe he's playing it, or just you know the, the incompetency of the U.S. government, which I don't think incompetency uh, incompetence is a part of it. I think yes, there's a bit of incompetence, but this is a plan. What they are using Iran for is that Iran will be the ones to be blamed for the U.S. economic collapse at this point. Uh, it could be Russia, China, Iran, Venezuela, you pick them all, the United States is going to go, they did this to us, and everybody's going to march off to war, and we're going to have, you know, you know, you know, the, the pages of the history books are being written as we speak, they always are, they always will be, but this time, the losses are going to be, at least 5 billion people will die in this uh, thing, and then of course, if the war starts, it'll probably be like 7 billion, <laughs> you know what I mean, like, it's going to be bad. This currency war, okay, will... Uh, China's been setting itself up for this by buying gold and, and backing itself, uh, doing trade deals everywhere. L listen, if you, uh, my prime minister up here has been taught, giving us the hints. These these people give us the hints. Now I don't know if John Kerry made a slip, or you know like uh, you know we're just sensationalizing like uh, what you call it, Lindsey Graham with the uh, nuke going off in Charleston Harbor, that type of thing. Maybe maybe it's a little column A, maybe a little column B, maybe it's a bluff, maybe not. But if it's the real deal, which it does sound like it is. Uh, and, you know, the other sources out there that I, I found were saying that the reason why this will lead to a default or could lead to a default of the U.S. dollar, basically an economic collapse like we wouldn't even imagine, is because the EU will basically say, no, we're dropping the sanctions. You guys still do business with Russia while everybody else in Europe has to uh, put up sanctions that hurt their own economies. So at, at some point, they're just going to say, screw you, right? And when they do... At that point, the Ukraine, we're getting back to the Ukraine again, if you're from the Ukraine, you might want to hear this. At that point, the United States is probably going to back away from the Ukraine, meaning Putin goes, my Ukraine. You, I don't know if you'll see an all-out invasion of the Ukraine. I have no idea what will happen at that point. But I do know in the Ukraine as we speak, they are mobilizing on the eastern side in a panic. You've got something like a couple of hundred tanks there, thousands of troops. They're ready to go and move into the, you know, the uh, eastern regions. And it, you could tell they're mobilizing. Maybe this was the so-called spring offensive that they were talking about. Now, there's speculation out there. Uh, I remember um, someone was saying that uh, the right sector is actually in it with Putin because every time the uh, Azov Battalion makes advance into the eastern side of the Ukraine, they back down. But again, it's hard to say. I thought that too. Maybe Poroshenko was on the take as well. But I don't know. What I think it is is Poroshenko, like I've always said, does not have control of the... Uh, you know, the uh, the Ukraine military, they don't have control of that. So I'm thinking what these people are saying, they know what all at war is coming with Russia. So they want to nip that area in the bud right away and get, you know, a stronghold there so when Russia comes in that they can half-ass defend themselves. But I don't think it's going to work. I, I think they're, they're about to be crushed at, you know, if this, if these dominoes fall where I think they're going to fall, it might not happen tomorrow, might not happen the day after, but it, this is the setup, this is the play. We'll have to keep an eye on it. So th this, I think, is really, really big news because when you have a, a, a vice secretary uh, come out and say, hey, uh, or whatever John Kerry is, 
I mean, he's like third in command, right? And he's out there saying that the U.S. dollar is about to collapse. It's about to lose world reserve currency. Now, most people, well, it's not that bad. Uh, yeah, it will be that bad because of the hyperinflation that will be coming back. It will take form as a really strong dollar, most likely. So people won't know what they're looking at. So hyperinflation, deflation, inflation, that type of stuff is is kind of a strange thing. But the thing is, is that nobody will be able to do business with the United States. Why? Their dollar will be too strong. We're already suffering from it here in Canada. However, the spinoff is we're getting, you know, our, our tourism industry, I think in Montreal has been the, the highest tourist uh, season they've had in like decades. Uh, so there's always, you know, pros and cons, but for people to do business, that's where uh, the linked industries uh, will suffer here the most. So, so we're going to feel it up here in Canada. Hence why my prime minister was out there saying, look, the world economic, you know, the economy in, Tr in China is not as good as what they said. Uh, you know, we're still affected by the global economy. And, you know, he's the only one out there saying that. Now, the rest are just saying, well, no, it's uh, economic collapse on Harper's watch because he mismanaged the economy. No, you, you guys are missing the point. The point is, is that there is one economy on the planet, central banker economy. That's it. And because of that, one falls, we all fall. Now, however, the world is split into two, the Anglo-American Empire and the Eurasian Pacific Empire. And we just seen China. I mean, this is a shot across the ballot, like you wouldn't believe. Devaluing your currency to undercut the U.S. dollar. That's what it is so they also have to do management there because you have to understand everybody that could that somebody ha that could tell us when we're going to war has told us that we are going to war they just didn't give us the date and time we're going to go back about two months george soros talked about a war with china is an inevitable if uh they don't comply with the imf henry kissinger was out there i mean these are the guys that you know got that get wars going uh, the destabilization in Ukraine is because of George Soros backed funding on behalf of the Rothschilds. And you, you know, in the State Department, uh, $7.5 billion went into the Ukraine to overthrow the government. Look how that's turned out. Now, here's where it gets even worse. Henry Kissinger, not, not even a week after, said China must comply with the IMF or else the, the conflict will wipe us both out. So he's told us we're going to war with China. Now, that said, George Soros recently. And if you don't know who these guys are, these are the most evil people on the planet. These are these are the scumbags. You, yes. Hell's too good for them, you know what I mean? But even Soros has been basically playing the markets against China and considering that he you know he was telling everybody that China was going to be the new world or uh, growth and be, you know joining the new world order and all that junk. Now he's he's basically doing economic war against China and in, in, in and stuff like that. Now, the Chinese government, the communist Chinese government of, of China has come out in the last past week or so saying that they are in a state of war with uh, the United States, a state of war. OK, so North Korea and South Korea, they're in a state of war. So but what was it over? Was it about the occupation of the South China Sea by the U.S. Navy? Not so much, believe it or not. No, it was because China, the Chinese government came out and said the U.S. is attacking our economy. So, I, and again, I'm not pro-Chinese government at all. You guys know that. There are no good guys in these players. There's just going to be a lot of people following orders getting killed. That's it for bankers on all sides. Now, China, on the other hand, has been wrestling, wrangling bankers left, right, and center, and uh, putting them up against the wall and shooting them uh, for uh, messing with the economy. So, you know, we know that they're desperate too. So, the, the, the default button here when the dominoes fall is a war is going, the shooting war is going to start, but where? Now, most likely, I would think Iran, because again, the whole deal that uh, is designed to get into a war with Iran, it's not a peace deal. There are no such things as a peace deal if we're talking U.S. State Department. We're not, there's no such thing. Ukraine was not about peace. It wasn't about the prosperity of the people. Look, $495 million from Canada, uh, 5 billion euros, uh, 7.5 billion U.S. dollars goes into the Ukraine. How much of the people see? Nothing. But they're, the military machines are moving along just fine, right? So we see what gets propped up. Now, we could take a lesson from the Greeks. They seen what happened in 2008. They're on their what billionth bailout. But before this bailout, they were smart enough to take their money out of the bank. Now, the banks are telling them to bring their money back, and they won't do it. Why? Because they know they do. They're never going to see it again. So the thing is, is a bank holiday, in the event of a U.S. currency uh, world reserve status being gone. Again, I, I said a while ago, the U.S. dollar is dead. It just doesn't know yet. The difference between the Chinese is even though the Chinese has $4 trillion of U.S. debt, they could just bleed that out over the years so it's not so immediate and just overtake their currency. Meanwhile, we always know that the Chinese have manipulated their currency for years. They, they, they do it all the time. So they're no, they're no better. But the difference is, is that they could, you know, it's kind of a, 
a bit of a kind of a fu kind of you know we'll we'll go down but you're coming down with us. The difference is, is with the Chinese is that they're set up with uh, gold and silver and they've bought more gold and when they reveal what they, I believe is in October when they're going to reveal how much gold they actually have, uh, you might see something you know spectacular happen in the markets. Now that said, if you go by the Wall Street guys, they're doing fine. They're, they're you know they're doing fine stealing everybody's wealth. Uh, but the thing is, is you know that the stock exchange is not the economy that it has. Look, the United States has about 23% unemployment at best. You know, that that's it, it might be even worse. That might be more closer to 30. It's a part-time nation now because of Obamacare. Uh, the, Obamacare is not like the Canadian healthcare system. It's not even close. Uh, the other thing is, is that down there, they're, they're also at a point where they have an $18 trillion deficit on the books. God knows what they have off the books. Maybe it's $200 trillion, $240 trillion. I've heard all kinds of numbers. Nobody knows. But that stuff is money that's outside the country. That, that's why you have to have wars all over the place. Uh, the Americans have to have wars all over the place. Is you know, JDAMs are expensive. They burn up. Uh, if if they don't if they don't go to war, the inflation will kill them. So uh, that that's why there's wars. It's never about democracy and women and children and stuff like that. Don't buy into that uh, BS uh, because it's not. It's about you know basically it's it's a war is a racket. It is an industry, but. To float the industrial, military industrial complex in the states, if you don't use it, you lose it. Meaning, uh, to justify over half of the uh, U.S. government's, uh, you know, taxes that come in go towards the U.S. military industrial complex. It, it combines, spends more on military than it does the next uh, something like uh, seven or eight countries combined. So you, you get that. It, it's it's a big industry. If you stop going to war. That's the only thing that's floating the economy. <laughs> you know, it's it is the wars the only thing that's floating the economy. You're going to have a collapse. And now maybe maybe this is just a severe market correction coming, but it doesn't matter because uh, again, you race your currency to the bottom, you'll get there. Uh, and buying the cheapest stuff from the everyday lowest uh, lowest you know bidder from the cheapest whatever, uh, you just you know you're going to get everybody. Uh, you know, when people are, that work at the WalMarts can't afford to shop there. That's telling you that things are not good. So we see all that going on. But the idea of him saying that, is it a bluff charge or is it the real thing? But we know the deal with the EU is that if they don't sign the Iran deal, um, bad things are going to happen because then they're going to say, okay, well, we're no longer going to go with the sanctions against Russia. And right there, that, that's the death of the Ukraine because at that point, the Russians are just, you know, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know what? What's going to stop them at that point? Nothing, nothing. So in the Ukraine, this also puts the uh, the Ukraine military and whatever they they're they're going to go into complete genocide mode. Now they already are, but uh, they're going to go into complete genocide mode in the uh, eastern side. They have to kill everybody there because if they don't, uh, they won't be able to defend the place when the Russians come in, right? So that's kind of it. It's going to be a nasty situation. I think you'll just see it disappear on the news. No one's going to talk about it anymore. No one's going to know that the Ukraine ever existed, and you get the idea. And you can, uh, you know, sum that one up to, again, U.S. foreign policy gone wrong or gone right, whichever. Again, the U.S. central bankers and, you know, the Anglo-American Empire and the EU and the IMF paid for the eastern Ukraine. They wanted it. They didn't get it. Uh, you know, Putin's, like I said, he could bleed out a, a proxy war in the Ukraine forever and a day. Again, no good guys in there, right? So just a lot of innocent people getting slaughtered for nothing. But at the end of the day... Uh, the long con goes to the Russians. They're, this is what you would call a checkmate because if the EU bails on them, Russia and the Russian sanctions are lifted. Uh, at that point, what that signals to the Russians is that no, no one's going to defend Ukraine. And what I've said for the people in Poland, watch out because when they throw the Ukraine under the bus, you're next. Uh, Lithuania, you're next. Uh, Hungary, you're next. Uh, you think the Russians are going to let that go? I don't think so. They're not going to let it go. It's going to get bloody. And I don't think... Uh, the rest of Europe is willing to go to war for Eastern Europe. Like I said, the goal they had, I believe, was to have Russia fight a war in Eastern Europe, you know, kill those people there fighting a war so that you could burn up the Russian troops and whatever, and then you could have a war with Russia and maybe, you know, you'd take them a lot easier. Right now, I don't think the U.S. military by itself could take the Russian military, uh, you know, all out. I mean, the losses on both sides would be just, like I say, we'll be lucky if this war, if less than... 
if more than 2 billion people survive on the planet. You know, like, I mean, it's mostly going to be people starving to death. But an economic collapse is the same kind of war. The wars now are fought economically. Uh, but it doesn't mean shooting parts can't, you know, when they get desperate, it will get to a shooting, uh, de definitely get to a shooting war. And this is an indicator that, okay, the, the Chinese, if they can't get into the IMF, they'll destroy the IMF. And with the AIIB, we have 105 countries or whatever already signed on to, including here in Canada. Now, we've already heard Harper talk about it. He said, look, uh, the, you know, Eurasian uh, economy, we want to be a part of that. Now, the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership uh, is, you know, a deal that nobody in their sane right mind wants to sign on to because we don't know what it is. But we also know that the uh, AIIB, the uh, Asian Infrastructure Bank thing, uh, has also been something that uh, has been setting up uh, what's known as the Silk Road or whatever, uh, trades and stuff like that. And, of course, there's sanctions on that. There has been for a long time. And... The thing is, is that that's kind of like their trade uh, partnership. And on top of that, they've also been forming with India, Pakistan, Iran, uh, Russia, and a few other countries, uh, forming their own version of NATO. I forget what they call it there, but it, it's their kind of version of NATO. And so we could see the world is literally split in two. And China, again, we see this big explosion in China, which may have nothing to do with anything, but it's just something, you know, it is odd, and then the next day they're devaluing their currency. Like, this is like twice in two weeks that they've done it, and they haven't done that for like 20 years. That said, on top of that, again, we see the massive buildup in the eastern side of Ukraine, where it looks like they're about to go for broke. I don't know how it's going to work out for them, but we'll see. Uh, that said, with the statement John Kerry made, it, it looks like they may try to uh, use Iran as the scapegoat. Remember, when these deal, if this deal with Iran gets signed, it's still it's still a checkmate because then Iran is going to be dumping more oil on the market, which a uh, barrel of oil is actually like 42 Canadian or whatever, but yet we're paying more at the pumps than ever because now what they're doing is they're saying, well, it's because of, of a refinery in Chicago that's not doing well. No, there's other things at play that, uh, again, you're never going to hear it on the mainstream media, but our, our dollar is not worth it. It's called hyperinflation. You know, things are going to get more expensive. Things domestically will probably do okay, but things coming in from other places are going to get more expensive. Plus, with the U.S. dollar going up, here in Canada, we're feeling the pinch. You know, we buy anything from the States, we now got to add an extra 20 cents, you know, 20 some odd cents to it. So we're noticing that, you know what I mean? And on top of that, again, we don't know what the, the, the EU will do exactly, but, you know, maybe it's a bluff charge too. But if they were to drop... The sanctions on Russia, then we're looking at more oil on the market. In other words, it's going to be like eight cents a barrel. <laughs> you know, I mean that type of thing. So that could have who knows what kind of consequences that's going to have. That said, we'll have to keep an eye on all that stuff. I think this is, uh, you know, that's a big statement coming from John Kerry. Again, we can listen to the politicians, and they'll tell us just about even if they speak in riddles, like I say, they will tell us pretty much what is going on. They are psychopaths. They have to tell you what's going on. They, they can't keep it to themselves. That said, we also know that they're with the Jade Helm. You know, there's a lot of speculation of something. An incident uh, may occur around October, uh, September, October, that type of thing. We know again the Chinese are talking about uh, showing their gold hand, but mind you, they've made that bluff charge before. We also know that they were talking about raising interest rates. There is no possible way they can raise interest rates. It is not possible for the United States. If they do it, it'd be like 0.1 of a percent. Uh, industry, just to see how volatile the markets will react. Um, yeah, and I still agree with Greg Manorino on it that when this collapse hits, it will be an extinction level event. Again, if they would have just let it go in 2009 or 2012 or 2011, it would be bad. But now it's even bigger. The longer they kick this can down the road, the worse it's going to be. But at some point, it's completely insolvent. And we are getting to that point where it's just it doesn't matter which way we go. But we do know when they get desperate, what the central bankers will want to do is get us into a shooting war. That way you can cover the collapse with war. And I've said it myself, I don't believe there will be an economic collapse until war comes. So the best way to get a war going, uh, which right now we know that U.S. troops will be heading back to Iraq most likely, uh, according to the Obama regime. And we also know that, you know, Israel definitely wants to go to war with Iran, and they can't do it themselves. They want the United States to do it. We know about the sanction option, where they're willing to kill 33 Americans to the one Israeli uh, in defense of Israel. But we also know with this nuclear deal with Iran, again, uh, it, the clause in there is give them everything they want. But here's one little stipulation. The one little stipul stipulation is if they develop a weapon or believe to develop a weapon, uh, you know, 
the, the, the United States gets the right to preemptively strike Iran, so does Israel. So, again, it's a guaranteed war. It's a guaranteed war. And then, of course, once they take out Iran, after that, you're pretty much on uh, China's doorstep. Even the Chinese government has acknowledged this, saying, yes, the, the, the whole thing going on Iran is really a war against us in the long run. And same with in Syria. It's a war against uh, Russia and China, more Russia on, on the uh, uh, Syrian side in the long run. We even have now U.S. troops that will be uh, getting into Iraq, uh, embedding themselves, kind of like the Jade Helm thing, embedding themselves in with uh, basically... I guess ISIS. I guess is the only people to you know they say to overthrow ISIS, but we know that the only people they're going after really seems to be Assad's troops. So uh, we already got British uh, British SAS that were caught you know by ISIS guys saying you know we're, they're trying to infiltrate and stuff like that. And you know again, who are they going after? They're always going after it seems Assad. So and the thing about chemical weapons with Assad again, uh, he said it best in 2010 that th they would be reserved for NATO. They're not going to waste uh, chemical weapons on, you know, other entities. Would they use them against Israel if the timing was right? And you have to understand Israel's days are numbered anyway because it's just you know they've painted themselves into a corner. But that said, you have to understand many of the Iraqi people are just rising up against the. Uh, you know the globalization, the uh, the U.S. and stuff like that. As, think about it this way: 13 years of occupation in Iraq, Afghanistan. They've been training Iraqi military left, right, and center in that time, and these guys are untrainable. I don't think so. These these are the guys that keep switching over to the ISIS. You know that ISIS is an ideology. It's it's again I've explained it in several videos that it's basically you know they want the one world caliphate, whatever. You know rise of the new Ottoman Empire minus the uh, Ottoman Turks and Sharia law everywhere. But it's just there's infighting amongst the tribes, which tribe gets to run it. That That's kind of what it's about. But at the end of the day, the last people they do want to run it is the United States. So we'll see that. We also see Egypt uh, uh, taking, uh, and Saudi Arabia now starting to do weapons deals with Russia. Now, Saudi Arabia, they've got no friends. So they're going to they're gonna have to uh, make peace with Russia. And the reason why is because, uh, again, I still don't know if Prince Vandermeer is alive or not. Uh, I heard he was poisoned and that was it. And then... I know the Saudi king Abdullah died. Now the, the new king's here. Maybe new regime change there. Who knows? Maybe this is why the the uh, what you call it? You've got the uh, Houthi uprising against uh, you know going against Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. I think is going to be thrown under the bus by the United States. So I think the Saudis are smart enough to realize this because they've announced that, the, and Turkey has done this too. Uh, they've announced that they're going to sell oil outside the U.S. dollar. So I think what they're going to do, and we know Turkey has the big pipeline with Gazprom. That's supposed to go through uh, Turkey, through to Syria, and then from Syria to Iran, and from Iran to China, uh, or through Pakistan, then China. I don't know if they'll do a deal with Pakistan yet, but you get the idea. So these pipelines are definitely big business, right? So, and energy independence, that's the other thing. So it would allow Iran to not only develop its economy, but also uh, pursue its, its weapons industry, which would, you know, compete with Raytheon and Lockheed Martin and all that type of stuff. And you better believe as soon as Iran has, you know, viable weapons to sell throughout the Middle East, people in the Middle East are going to buy them from Iran. They're not going to buy them from the United States anymore. So again, it's a, it's, it's a war's racket. It's a big business. It's a huge business, right? And we also know that uh, you know people you know the, the people are starting to notice that they're becoming more poor not everybody's feeling it there is opportunity out there but the big problem is is that we're living in the nuclear age and because of that we don't know what these gaggle heads are really really capable of uh, you know most people say they would never do it they would never do it but I'm not convinced they wouldn't because they are that crazy you can listen to these people talk uh, and they're they're basically they are so insane that they believe they can just you know Fire, have a nuclear war, uh, and they'd come up after and start the whole system over again. Go high, you know. They they just do not have a grasp of consequence, like most psychopaths. They don't have a grasp of consequence. So I do believe that you're going to see some really desperate things. And look, we keep hearing about this marvelous recovery, like crazy. That the U.S. is in such recovery that the economy is just taking off like crazy. And then up here in Canada, okay, we keep hearing how great the economy is. And stuff like that, and I hear it on the CBC all the time. But then all you hear is layoffs. Uh, I forget what the, the latest one is, but there's going to be thousands of layoffs again in Canada. So there is no job growth. It's either part time work, but all these big corporations, these too big to fails, they're all failing. People don't have any more money. Now, Harry Dent was out there saying that's because we have a baby boomer uh, problem where everybody's at that age where they just don't buy anything anymore. 
Well, that could be true to a good point, sure, but that's not going to give us the problem we have. What ha where the problems what we have are is basically is printing money out of thin air. It's not even worth the paper. It's not even printed on. That's pr problem number one. Problem number two is a global economy. We don't have sustainable economies with, you know, nobody can sustain their economy. Uh, you know, the, they, they're, we're globalized. You know, there's one country on the planet or, or perhaps two countries on the planet. That's it. You know, there's a lot of names of, of you know, nation states, but uh, there's really only two countries. You're either using the U.S. dollar or you're using something else, right? So uh, that something else is probably going to be the Chinese Yuan Renminbi. So when we're looking at it like that, it's really kind of a, a really hostile takeover uh, that we're seeing that the Chinese are, they are responding to being attacked economically. And their response is basically, here's your treasuries back. And that, that's, 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 again, the Chinese, the Chinese government has told us we are getting ready to go to war with uh, the United States. Because we have to understand, when you, the U.S. economy collapses and China says, we want our $4 trillion back in, in U.S. treasuries. Well, the United States, which already has done this, uh, with 270, minimum 270 uh, free trade economic zones, basically uh, 270 areas in the United States, and they're large areas, like thousands of acres, uh, of property that will be given to the Chinese government as sovereign Chinese territory, meaning you're, you're going to have like a Swiss cheese effect of United States of America with a whole bunch of Chinese islands in it. And yeah, that will be sovereign Chinese territory because that, that's paying them back. So again, how's the best way to uh, not pay back your creditor? Go to war with them. So that, that's what's happening with China is, is that they're basically, they want, the United States wants to get into a war with China. Uh, what they would probably prefer is Japan and, and Taiwan and all that and the Philippines uh, because that's why the military buildup is there. Uh, take the brunt of the, the fighting. But, uh, and we also know J Japan has been going crazy with trying to, uh, to uh, you know, break its, you know, after World War II where it says it would not, you know, have a standing military that would, uh, you know, pursue war. Now it, that's kind of gone out the window and we're seeing the rhetoric even more and more in the last past couple of weeks of you know you know we want nuclear missiles in japan we want this uh, air defense systems are going everywhere uh we could see there's a massive buildup. we also see you know that you know all these uh, drills there's another couple of uh, drills going up on the arctic i can't remember the name of the drills uh russia is doing a uh, drill with uh, shooting down uh, mind you they're using older, older soviet technology just to kind of keep guys you know freshened up, so to speak, uh, of a, uh, you know, like shooting down uh, shoulder-fired missiles and that type of thing. They're doing that drill kind of as a counter, I guess. Jade Helm is still going on, and we know Jade Helm is basically, if anything were to break out in September or October, which I'm not saying there will be, but again, we have to keep an eye on it. These things are painting themselves into a corner, and at some point, something's got to give. And again, I say no collapse until war comes. So, which, if John Kerry is talking about a U.S. dollar, you know, losing world reserve currency. To lose world reserve currency, which has happened to many nations in the past, but when you do, bad things happen to that nation's, you know, and people are going to look for people to blame. So the best thing for them to do is to get a war going so you can blame Russia, China, or Iran. Then that, the next thing after that is basically, you know, who knows what's going to happen, uh, you know, uh, what the fallout of that's going to be. That said, I think the, the Russian Chinese strategy again these are the only two that are actually keeping us out of the war they, they will pro the United States wants them to fire first they know this they, they know that uh, particularly Russia they know that they want the United States wanted the Russians to do uh, you know like a Georgian invasion they, they wanted to see like you know column of Russian tank after Ru Russian tank go into the Ukraine and they didn't do that they they, they basically said no we're gonna go proxy war on you you know, and you, you can't sit there and say, well, the Russians are evil for doing this when the, the Americans do this all over the place. I mean, how do you think the Islamic State got so powerful <laughs> by arming the so-called Free Syrian Army, right? Uh, overthrowing Gaddafi and Libya. Uh, plus, there's also seems that all these migrants that are flooding into Europe, which is creating massive tensions. I, I do believe there's going to be massive blowback for that. Uh, you're seeing it in Czech Republic. You're seeing it... Uh, in Hungary, they're building up borders to try to keep the refugees out. Uh, in uh, Germany, they're attacking the refugee camps uh, and the refugees. Uh, so we're seeing it get more rough. I'm still waiting for gunboats in the Mediterranean to, you know, from like Golden Dawn and stuff like that. Greece are attacking the refugees, stuff like that. And they're coming in from ma mainly Libya and stuff like that because of U.S. foreign policy. When Hillary Clinton had, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, Gaddafi, you know, overthrown with Obama, of course, and they were, you know, so happy about that. But now we see that the starvation is getting to the people. Mil millions of people are, you know, I forget. I think over, you know, a couple uh, seven, eight thousand people have died floating in the Mediterranean now. Now on the other side, we see the U.S. flag is now going up for the first time, and I forget how many years, uh, fifty some odd years, going up in Cuba at the uh, embassy in Cuba. Of course, there is no talks of the Cuban government kind of easing up on its people and stuff like that. But the whole reason why they're there, and, and I'm pretty sure the Cuban government knows what's going on. They've been playing well with Russia. Russia, uh, about two years ago, has paid off 90% of Cuba's debt. And all of a sudden, Obama comes out, or not a couple years ago, I guess last year when Obama made this announcement, or two years ago, I guess, <laughs> geez, how time flies, uh, just after the 2012 election. Uh, they, they paid off 90% of Russia. Russia paid off 90% of Cuba's debt, and they're opening up Russian military bases there. Hence, all of a sudden, we've got to get rid of sanctions against Cuba. Why? Because that means there will be nuclear missiles in uh, Russian nuclear missiles will be at some point probably stationed in Cuba. We know Venezuela is uh, Cuban friendly. We know submarines go back and forth all the time. We know war, uh, Russian warships and bar their bombers go back and forth to Cuba and and. Uh, and uh, Russia and uh, Venezuela all the time, but we also know that uh, the South America in itself tends to be more favorable towards Russia and China than it does the United States because of the war. You know, a lot, lot, lot of reasons there, but the war on drugs is one, and it keeps going. And then, of course, uh, regime change after regime change eventually blowback will hit the United States, and that blowback will probably take in the form of basically alienation of the United States, which is the U.S. foreign policy is designed to create as much hatred for the United States as possible. Uh, so that, you know, the, the making uh, it more likely to be attacked by other nations so that it can, again, for the military industrial complex, that oh, we have to put all this militarization and martial law in all the time because uh, everybody's out to get us. So that, that, that is the plan. But the thing is, is uh, who's in on it, who's not? Uh, there's been people out there uh, on the STG Bull Report. There was a guy that called, he unfortunately, state remain, remained anonymous. And he was talking about his clientele, which he's a gold and silver buyer. And he said there was a, a certain clientele that he says is, is a big financial person that is world renowned and known. And they were extremely worried what was coming up in the next few weeks, probably. And we are seeing like almost every day on the financial news front that there's something bizarre happening in the markets. Something is just going long back crazy. Things are going up. They're going down. Uh, who knows exactly what game is really being played. We know that gold took a big hit a few weeks ago because a massive amount of paper gold was dumped on the market. We, we know that this is usually a JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs thing most of the time. So again, I don't know if it was them, but I'm sure we'll find out down the road that it was. That said, we have to also keep an eye on all the, uh, all the, uh, you know, the tensions in, in uh, Eastern Ukraine, because if the right sector isn't in it with Putin, which I don't think they are, that that means they could be a black, uh, a black swan event about to happen because they could make it a, a bash for uh, the Crimea. And if they do, again, I don't think they're going to get very far if they try. I don't think the Ukraine military can take uh, the Russians in the Crimea uh, at all because, the, you know, in Donbass and in, uh, you know, where the DPR and the LPR are in eastern Ukraine, uh, they're basically, you know, they're, they're, I mean, there's Russian troops there, but they're there in low numbers, and they're basically there as advisors mostly, and you know, teaching the uh, the DPR and LPR how to use you know weapons or whatever, and stuff like that, and then tanks and whatever come in. But in the Crimea, it's not that at all. They're Russian Federation. You know, they, they, you know, the flags are flying high there. Uh, some Tartars were saying that uh, you know some people said there's no buildup in the Crimea whatsoever from Russia, but there was already 6,000 troops there when the coup ha the Maidan coup happened. Remember, and I've said this right from day one, that that would be the line in the sand. Because again, Russia is not going to give up its navy port. It's not going to give up. It's not. You know, it already had the breadbasket taken from them. It already had the pipelines disrupted. Uh, you know, through the Ukraine. Now they're going around the Ukraine. So I think uh, we'll have to. Wait. I don't think the Europeans are really uh, the rest of Europe, like France and England and, and stuff like that. I don't think they're ready to play that game. Holland strikes me as kind of too scared to go along with the plan. Uh, I think he'll probably say, no, we're going to drop the, the sanctions against Russia. Uh, we also heard about that phone call between Putin and Obama, and it seems like what John Kerry said is kind of what this conversation was about. So that, again, can't confirm that. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Maybe it'll come out. But it looks like Russia and China are the key uh, trump cards in the Iran deal. So with that said, 
if the U.S. doesn't sign it, uh, it could, you know, put the U.S. economy in like the most bizarre uh, tailspin ever. But it, if they do sign it, then it's a guaranteed war with Iran. So, which I give it like two weeks after they sign it, that they'll say, oh, well, you violated this and there would be preemptive strikes everywhere. So we'll have to watch this stuff pretty closely. Again, I don't like giving dates and times because maybe two years later, all this plays out. But these are big words coming from a person pretty high up. You know, again, uh, how many more warnings are we going to get? You know, I think at this point, if you don't have your food and, and, and bread and bullets kind of put away, uh, you know, be prepared. That's all I'm telling you. I, again, rice is probably the cheapest thing you can buy. 18 pound bag of rice, uh, go out there, buy, you know, a couple of bags, you know, 10, 50, you know, eight, 10 bucks. Buy them when they're eight, 10 bucks. Don't wait till they're, you know, 45 bucks a bag, uh, that type of thing. That's what's coming. And we're already seeing. If you, if you look at the prices from 2007 to now, food prices from 2007 to now, you'll understand why, you know, a third of the world is starving to death. You know, if we're feeling the prices, they've felt it. You know, they're going to feel it first. And we also know weather patterns are kind of bizarre and stuff like that, too. And we are, you know, apparently gearing up for a crazy El Nino. Set, uh, El Nino. And also, we also know that the sun is in a cooling trend, so, you know, crops might be a little bit shorter add the aspect of a big ass war yeah good to be prepared okay so next to that i'm going to leave it at about that i'm pretty sure i'm probably forgetting other big news but to me i think this is a really big dot to, to watch and for those of you who might be joining me for the first time I, I don't give predictions and dates and times because we don't know what games are going to play it's counter it's a chess game it's uh yeah uh, uh advance retreat block and counter it's it's basically those moves and we don't know what trump cards are going to play because every time it seems like uh you know for example they wanted an excuse to get into a war with syria a direct you know u.s boots on the ground type of war with syria and russia and john Kerry slipped and he said well if assad was to give up his chemical weapons then we you know we'd have we would back down and putin calls assad says, yeah yeah give up your chemical weapons now do, does do the Syrians still have any chemical weapons? Probably they would. I mean, again, you can't trust anybody in this game now. There's no good guys. And the thing is, is that, the, you know, are they using them against their own people? I highly doubt it. Now, right now, the claim is that Assad is napalming his uh, his enemies. Uh, but again, if we we're really trying to get rid of ISIS, the fighting, you know, and they didn't want to put U.S. troops on the ground, you back Assad's army, you know. You, you know, you back, us, and mind you, I say don't back any of them. But... Why is there? Why is Syria destabilized in the first place? Again, this goes back to U.S. foreign policy. 2010, a Facebook post goes out and says, "Hey, you know what? We don't like the human rights uh, that we have, and we want better living conditions here in Syria." A bunch of people take out and they go protest. What happens? Uh, U.S. sends in weapons to the Free Syrian uh, Free Syrian Army and started the conflict. The conflict gets into having Al Qaeda come in. Oh, suddenly the the, the bad Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. In, or in Iraq or whatever uh, are basically good guys in uh, Syria so then okay well US troops are kind of noticing this and they're getting kind of pissed off so so we can't call them Al-Qaeda anymore we're, they're now known as al Nusra Front and then these are the good guys they're fighting Assad and you, again John Car uh, McCain's out there picture after picture with uh, you know ISIS rebel leader one after another you know al-Baghdadi all these guys these are his so-called friends uh, and the thing is, is that they just keep changing the name. So then it was, you know, the Free Syrian Army was too too bad. So then the guys doing the bad stuff in the Free Syrian Army, well, news were front. And then there was the, what's called the uh, the Khorasan group, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. And then there was IS, then ISIL, and now ISIS, uh, and then just IS. You know, which one are they, right? And again, we see the U.S. foreign policy, it kind of plays out the same way disastrously throughout the Middle East, but that is the plan. It's the order out of chaos theory that uh, uh, douchebag uh, Henry Kissinger keeps talking about. And uh, if they're fighting each other, they're not fighting us. Ha, 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 you know. But I think people are catching on to that. And because people in these other countries are catching on to it, they're coming up with different counters. They know military, and the Chinese are, are not stupid either. They know militarily that they can't take the United States and they can't take the United States and NATO together. The Russians are kind of the same. They might be able to, again, 
Russia versus the United States, I think whoever has the better strategy wins. Uh, the weapons are comparable enough. Yes, the United States has a bit of an advantage on the weapons in some areas, but the numbers are definitely to Russia. Now, the United States with NATO, no, I don't think Russia can take, but again, at what losses? You know, you got five people left in every country, that's not a win. You know, World War II wasn't a win. Nobody won World War II. It's just who lost less. That's how you have to look at it. And the Russians know this. So the Russians, basically, they're going to play along with China in the economic war. And China wants to win the war economically first. Uh, because, they, again, they know that they will lose in a shooting war. Not right away. It's not going to be, a, again, going to war with Russia or China is a bad idea, period. The Chinese, they might not be as powerful militarily as Russia, but they are powerful enough. Their missiles are powerful enough. They're you know, they have a big enough Navy, the losses will be incurred, but more importantly, air power wise, uh, more threat from Russia than, than China. And you have to understand China and Russia have a pact together to, to help defend each other. So uh, the air power problem is, is, is everybody's problem, meaning you have, uh, whether it's Russian SU-24s or Chinese uh, J-10s flying around, uh, bombing the crap out of you, uh, they, can, they can be in a lot of different places at once. And a lot of people would definitely die in this conflict and not and, you know in china it wouldn't just yes the people in the, the surrounding countries even probably as far down as australia and new zealand and out as far as hawaii they would probably the chinese probably would take hawaii at some point uh, they, in fact they'd probably go after guam and hawaii right away why because if they could get that guam hawaii midway uh wow they would have such coverage over the ocean especially with their land-based missile system mobile missile systems uh that would make uh, shipping lanes very dangerous and we also know that the chinese have uh, recently started to arm up uh, about 3,000 uh, merchant ships now what they're arming them with i don't know maybe they're putting artillery guns on them maybe they're just putting uh, shoulder held fired missiles i don't know what they're putting on there uh probably a couple of light deck guns that type of thing uh i mean it's not uncommon to see chinese use uh howitzer uh you know uh those uh you know howitzers on on, on uh, you know boat decks and stuff they will do that you know again they want to fight an island war they don't want to fight because uh, they know an island war uh is 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 pretty hard to beat i mean we can look at the japanese in world war ii again you you get dug in trench after trench in an island war when there's thousands of islands where can a warship go that it's not going to be shot at you know so again an air power navy war is to the advantage of the americans but an island war is definitely an advantage to uh, you know, a possibility of maybe 740 million man army. Uh, again, maybe 200, nobody knows what the numbers are in China, but if you, you just add up the available fighting age of people, uh, then you could have a 740 million man Chinese army, which I don't know how we'd counter that. So I guess I'll leave it at about that. Uh, big things, watch out for them. Uh, watch the uh, financial markets. Again, I'm not a financial guy, so maybe some of the stuff I'm, I'm off on, but we do know that we, we see and hear day to day that there you know there's losses here there's losses there uh protect yourself the best you can i'm not i'm more of a bread and bullets guy than a gold and silver guy but maybe that's not a bad idea either but most importantly have food right? that's the biggest because everything else you can't eat right so anyway i guess i'll leave it out about that so if you like this kind of content please consider making a donation to the channel thank you so much to everybody who has uh perhaps you might want to uh you know uh, advertise on this channel just pong me a message we'll read the youtube agreement together and uh, we'll see what we can come up with and maybe uh yeah maybe uh you know for your own products or maybe you want your channel uh, uh a channel shout out, a shout out or whatever you know like uh, you know again maybe for a small donation i can do that for you too next to that rate subscribe share comment like be true to yourself be true to others always always do the right thing and have yourselves a great day eh? Hey, hi, and welcome. All right, World War Three update. Now, if my voice sounds a little bit different, it's because I had to buy a new, go out and buy a brand new microphone. I hope it's not too different, because I know some people notice differences. Uh, I remember saying in one of my Q and A's, because somebody commented, "What you don't do World War Three updates anymore?" And I had said, "Well, you know, when you don't hear a World War Three update from me, it's good news. No news is good news because it means that there's not much going on in the world and things are calming down." Well, today that is not the case. In fact. This is probably going to be uh, one of my more important uh, World War III updates because of the dominoes that are in play right here. It, we are seeing a checkmate that is about to just unfold. 
uh, it really, really will be uh, something that will have impact in many parts of the world all at once. And what I'm talking about, and a lot of people are talking about this already, is John Kerry. We're not talking conspiracy theorists. We're not talking uh, we think and we believe. We're talking what John Kerry said. And what he said was that uh, if the nuclear deal with Iran is not signed, the U.S. dollar could lose world reserve currency status. Let that sink in. It means the Cold War is about to turn hot if that's the case. And at the same time, okay, there's so many things going on here that it's really hard to kind of nail it all in one shot. So hopefully I won't forget too much, but we're going to go to China. Uh, about two days ago, there was a massive, massive explosion in China, apparently due to uh, the sewer system and blew up and killed a bunch of people. Not that many considering the size of the explosions, but these were really large explosions. Now, maybe this has nothing to do with nothing. Sometimes coincidence, maybe not. Who knows? But the very day after, which is... Uh, basically yesterday or today from the making of this video, uh, the Chinese basically devout yeah? Sorry about that interruption, but the Chinese basically devalued their currency for the second time in about 20 years where they've done this, uh, but they've also uh, lowered it, uh, or the, lowest they, the lowest they've had it since I think 20 years. So you'll have to look into, uh, I'm not sure if I quite understood how they've done it, but the idea is, how do they? How did they lower their currency? What I'm hearing is what they did is dumped, you guessed it, U.S. Treasury bonds on the market. And who's buying these bonds? You guessed it, the Federal Reserve. So what does that have to do with everything? Well, it has everything to do with everything. In other words, there is no economic recovery in the United States. Things are falling apart big time. It's getting insolvent. Now, here's the thing with what John Kerry said. Okay. Uh... You know that uh, if, if the Iran deal is not signed, that it would the United States would lose world reserve reserve currency status. But what you have to keep in mind is how is how is that again? How does that happen if Iran doesn't sign the deal? It's Iran. It's in the middle of nowhere, right? It has nothing to do with nothing, right? Well, not so fast, because there is a lot to do with everything. And if you're from the Ukraine, you're going to want to hear the next little bit that I'm going to talk about. And it's something that I said right from day one in the Ukraine. The Ukraine will be thrown under the bus. It will, it will be. You, here we call it Ukraine, Putin calls it my Ukraine, and it will be a part of Russia at the end of this deal. It, it, almost a guarantee. If the, if the dominoes fall where they're going to fall, the Ukraine is, is toast. And we're going to get to the Ukraine in a minute. But right now, I've always said there's three phases to war. And it's not my saying. This is just kind of how it plays out in history. You have a currency war, which we, we're seeing now. This China devaluing its dollar is, there's a couple of plays here. Number one, it allows them to be more competitive on the market because the IMF is not allowing them to have a second reserve currency. They're, they're not allowing them into the club. So they're devaluing their dollars so people move to that. This also, by get, sending the treasuries back, increases the U.S. treasuries. Uh, you know, that, that, that's what I've said. That was the trump card China has, is that they could dump $4 trillion worth of treasuries on the market. They might not do it all at once. But what will happen is you're gradually going to notice things in the United States getting extremely expensive. In other words, hyperinflation is coming back to the United States. The Americans only have a death and debt-based economy. They don't manufacture hardly anything anymore. They can only live on imports, exports. Unfortunately, that's the way NAFTA works. It screws everybody over in the end. But the Chinese, they might be playing a really smart game here. It's the long con. But here's what they're doing. They're going to drive their dollar. They're racing their dollar to the bottom. This will drive, and by sending the U.S. Treasuries back, it will drive the U.S. dollar up. Nobody will be able to buy anything from the Americans. And up here in Canada, we do 80% trade with the Americans. Look, a little uh, refinery took a hit in Chicago. Our fuel prices go up in Alberta. Alberta. <laughs> you see, uh, Trudeau years ago when we signed into APEC, uh, APEC, uh, OPEC, sorry, uh, we, we agreed not to build any more refineries here. I bet you, you know, when people are paying 8 bucks a liter, they're going to wish we had the refineries here. Again, a sustainable economy, not a global-based economy. It's a mountain climber effect. One falls, we all fall. And right now, what the Chinese are doing is they're cutting the rope. They're, link, they're, they're putting their, their link into the mountain. They're cutting the rope. They're letting everybody else fall. But people will go to that currency. It is now going to be competitive. It is a currency war. Now, there's, this also coincides with the trade war. Japan and China already have a trade war and currency war currently going. So trade war, currency war, shooting war. Or uh, currency war, trade war, shooting war. Okay, now we have the trade war already with Russia. It's called sanctions. We have it on Iran. Now, the thing is, is if this deal isn't signed with Iran, 
how does it lead to a U.S. currency, you know, default or whatever? Well, it's simple. The EU, if the U.S. does not sign this deal, the EU may drop sanctions against Russia. Let that sink in. If the EU doesn't, if they, if the U.S. doesn't sign this deal with Iran, okay, which is 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 the deal Israel needs anyway to go to war with Iran, because all they have to do is say, oh, Iran violated this one little sanction or this one little section, and they they get to blow the snot balls out of Iran all they like with the U.S. military. Um, that that's 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 the deal. It looks like a great deal for Iran, but it's not. Uh, again, I don't know why they would have signed it in the first place because it has that stipulation in there. If they pursue weapons of mass destruction, and that can mean anything, okay, the, the U.S. can go to war with them. So you see how this can turn hot very quickly, but it gets worse than that because if the EU, if they don't sign it, the EU will drop all the sanctions with Russia, meaning uh, Putin is playing a, tr uh, maybe he's playing it or just, you know, the, the incompetency of the U.S. government, which I don't think incompetency, uh, incompetence is a part of it. I think, yes, there's a bit of incompetence, but this is a plan. What they are using Iran for is that Iran will be the ones to be blamed for the U.S. economic collapse at this point. Uh, it could be Russia, China, Iran, Venezuela, you pick them all. The United States is going to go, they did this to us and everybody's going to march off to war and we're going to have, you know, you know, you know, the, the pages of the history books are being written as we speak. They always are. They always will be. But this time, the losses are going to be at least.